Good morning, everyone. Welcome on this uh, wonderful day of celebration of our independence. Uh, and you know, it's a, it's it's amazing because the day when the church should be the most full is the day when it is the least full, oftentimes. And it's here to celebrate that we've been called out of the bondage of this world, amen, and out of darkness into light. And you know, as we celebrate independence in America, many countries have a similar holiday, but in America, we, we celebrate the seceding from England. And the Declaration of Independence was issued in July 4th of 1776, and it was issued uh, as, a, as a proclamation of a separation of 13 American colonies that severed, if you will, their political collect connections with England. And it's summarized that the, 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 colon, the colonists were motivated in seeking their independence or their detachment from the government, if you will, that once ruled and reigned them with tyranny. Now that word secede means to withdraw formally or to separate a member from a federal union or, a, or alliance or a political or religious organization. It's to detach completely separate. Uh, and, and another another uh, word to think about there is they left what many people say tyranny. And tyranny is a cruel oppression, usually by a government or a rule. Now, I don't think we can help but go back into um, the scriptures that we're going in through Exodus on Thursday of Israel being pulled out from underneath the slavery and the bondage that they were under in Egypt for 400 years. And the Lord performing a miracle to pull them out from underneath that slavery that once captivated them, held them, and not only that, killed them and was, was destroying them. Uh, even though we know we can't destroy God's children, they were multiplying the slaves, but they were being killed, literally being um, sent in, in the walls that they were building for Pharaoh and, and being shoved into those and even hay was taken away as God was saying let my people go he all the more put this tax and oppression upon them and you remember the Boston Tea Party was, was getting rid of taxes that we were paying to England and all these things just kicked this whole thing off and there's a tax that Satan's always trying to put on men and women and people a tax that you think you're getting away with something and yet there's a penalty there's a price that you never realize was going to be there that comes later. You know, we all are trying to save up our taxes for our houses. And I'm like, it's coming. You know, it's, we know, at least we're aware. Well, Satan has an un, uh, unaware tax that's on us. A lot of times it doesn't come until you least expect it. They say, you owe me now. And he's a liar. And he has this, he's a wicked tax master, task master. And we're slaves, you know, to this world and to the God of this world. And yet the Lord says, come, be my slave, be my willing bond servant, and even more than be my willing bond servant, come be free, come serve with me as a friend, come be liberated from this incarceration that you once were part of. And Romans chapter 6 verse 15 says, what then, shall we sin because we're not under, uh, under the law but under grace? And he says, certainly not. Do you not know that whom you were present or present yourselves to slaves to obey, you are the one slave to whom you obey, whether the sin leadeth to death or obedience which leadeth to righteousness? But God be thankful think that through you were though you were slaves to sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you become slaves now to righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you were presented, uh, just as you present your members once to slaves to uncleanness and of lawlessness, uh, leading you into uh, uh, awfulness, uh, unlawness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves to sin, you were free in regards to righteousness. What fruit did you have then? And there are those things which you are now ashamed. For the end of those is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves to God, you are fruit and holiness to holiness and the end of everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in our Lord Jesus Christ. 
We have tough taskmasters. We think sometimes it, it, it bewilders me that we've been free and we have these liberties in America. People come from all over the world and they break down the doors, if you will, and even sneak in to experience those liberties to, to flee the oppression from the governments that they were once under. And they will put their lives at stake to do this. Sometimes piling people into grass coming over from Cuba, so much fill that they're risking sinking. One more person. Let's fit one more person. Let's get there. Let's get to that promise line. Let's do whatever it takes. And the problem is, is that's great. That's the heart that many have to get out of the world and the impression of the sins that they've seen that once captivated them. Those addictions, those things that once enslaved me and caused pain and grief and sorrow and burdened me, now I've come to be free in God. Free me, Lord, from my addictions. Free me from alcohol. Free me from drugs. Free me from porn. Free me from these things, this self-centeredness. Free me from my consumption that I ate and ate and ate and all it did was make me fat. As a matter of fact, gave me diabetes and made me lose limbs because of it. It's killing me. Free me. But what happens once God says, yes, I will free you, and I have freed you, and I've paid the price. I've made the way. We forget our taskmasters from before. And we want to run back to them. Isn't it exactly what you did? As soon as they got out, this miracle that the Lord did, parting the waters, showing his might against every God that was harming them. He showed, I am the truly living God, greater than all these gods, even over life. And he broke Pharaoh. He broke the God of this world, if you will, with his might and his power to snatch you out of your captivity and to bring you into a place of blessing into the presence of God. Is anyone cold here? If you're cold, you can turn it. But if you're cold, sorry. I just usually sit like that. All right. I'm just conscious of one. But it's great here. It's nice and cool, but I don't want anyone to. Okay. Yep, raise the button. So as we're coming out of these taskmasters, we can forget and we start to think about the pleasure again. Those needs that were met. This, at least my needs were met, they said. I, I had water there and food there. No, do you realize that, this, that literally he was taking the food away from them and saying, do you double the work? They forgot. How quickly we forget when we're pulled out of that. And so there's these taskmasters that we still have in this world, and as you're in the flesh, sometimes we yearn to be encapsulated again, even though God says, I've set you free. What are these taskmasters? Well, we know sin. Sin is a taskmaster. We know the, the one who's the creation of this, or the, the spawner of this sin, the father of lies and deception, he's a ta taskmaster. He's a brute, and he's a cunning one at that. He will, minister, he will make himself a minister of light to him you, to woo you, and then grab hold of you and want to destroy you. The devil is a taskmaster, a uh, tough taskmaster. And then also we know that the flesh can be a taskmaster. Our own selves, our very selves, are sometimes our worst enemies. We get up and we say, I want what I want when I want it, I want to rule. And we put ourselves back under our own governance. Right? Like Jacob. Heal, can I heal catcher? Can I be trying to get what I want? And then, of course, we know the law can be a taskmaster. The law of God can bring condemnation upon each and every one of us if that's what we want to live and hold ourselves to that standard of, which everyone is falling short of. And by the glory of God, we've been liberated from the law. Not that it was wrong, but we couldn't achieve it, and now we've entered into the law of grace, the law of love. The law that the Lord, Jesus Christ, has made for us. In liberty. So if you go to Exodus chapter 11, or chapter 1, verse 11, it says, Therefore, they did set over themselves taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and, built Pharaoh, and to build Pharaoh's treasure cities in Pithom and Ramesses. In Exodus 3, chapter 7, goes on and says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have me or heed their cry because of the taskmasters that are over them, for I am aware of their sufferings. So as you think about this, here he is putting these bondage on the people so much so that they're crying out, 
help me, Lord, help me, Lord, help me, Lord, I can't take it anymore. They're crying out, just like the tyranny that some had for religious oppression and taxation and things like that from England at one point. And they're crying out, get me out of here. They've made it to America and they want us to see, they want to separate from all this. We get to this place where the burdens of the world, the sin of our life, start to come to realization and the fruits of them, and we say, help me, Lord. Whenever you hear Egypt, it's representation of sin. It's representation of the very thing that's contrary to God, missing the mark, if you will. And this made the people of Israel cry out. How many of us in our oppression cried out for liberty? Cried out at one point. You were broken. You were at your wit's end. And the enemy had to checkmate you lose. And you said, help me, Lord. Do we go back to that same enemy and entertain him? What's our second taskmaster? I said Satan. The one who's the root of these evils, the one who's planning these things, the one who's incarcerating you, tempting you to come away from God, to make yourselves gods like he thinks he is. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, In whom God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which, are, which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. So he keeps you drunk. He feeds you whatever it takes, like a drug dealer, to keep you out of your mind, to keep you blind from God. It's what he wants to do, to shield you from truth, to shield you from liberty, to shield you from freedom, to keep you bound, to keep you working for him until he chews you up and spits you out because he could care less about you. It's what he does. He's wretched. I don't think we even understand the partner that we sometimes choose, the one that we enter in with. He doesn't care about you in one iota. Never did, never will. He's a taskmaster. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring, is a roaring lion who walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He wants you for himself. No matter what, you're just a commodity, and he wants to chew you up and spit you out. Just like us who chew up all these addictions, and we can't stop, he devours it's insatiable until it ultimately kills you. And the Bible says, Jesus says, that when we lie, when we do those things that are of him, you're of your father, the devil. That's who we all once were. You were under that lineage. But that such were some of you. I've called you out of this. What's the third taskmaster? The law. The law, which brings condemnation. The law, which is perfect, in which our flesh strives to achieve, and yet all born in sin fall short. Only Christ Jesus has fulfilled the law perfectly and made a way that we can enter in and come out of liberty from the law, which is there to condemn. It says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, Wherefore the law was your schoolmaster to bring you to Jesus Christ, that you might be justified by faith, by faith in God's goodness, in God's grace, in God's mercies. Not the works that we do, lest we could boast. We can never achieve that, and yet the taskmaster of this world would tell you you can. I will be like the Most High. I will ride on the clouds. I will. This is what he said. He's seeing it all. Trying to make himself a God. And he tells you, you can do it too. You don't need God. It's by faith, not by works, lest any man should boast. It's by faith in the work of God Almighty. It's in the liberty and the light yoke which God has put upon you now. Not the yoke that you could not carry and never will be able to carry. It's a tough taskmaster. It drives us to our knees at the cross. Checkmate. There's no other way. There's no other name under heaven by which you must be saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. Where are you running? What taskmaster are you looking for to give you liberty? What might or power or armor or weapon are you grabbing to free yourself? Won't work. Never has, never will. Are you tired, Paul, who walked in self-righteousness, killing? He said, it's me you persecute, as Jesus met him on the road to Damascus with a plan to kill the saints of God. It's me you persecuted, Paul. 
You're strong with your words, with your authority, with your power, but it owns you. Don't you see the pricks that I'm showing you trying to give you the light yoke? You're looking with your eyes. Let me blind you and open your eyes to me. Let me show you the liberty. The great liberator. Like Moses, used as a type of Christ in Egypt, as God chose him to come and to free his people, Jesus was sent in a much bigger scale. The realization of freedom, the truth of freedom. He came to the world to free the world. Not just Egypt, but the entire world from all of these taskmasters. Every single one of them. John says in John chapter 12, verse 32, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. All men. In John chapter 8, verse 31, it says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If you continue in my word, if you walk with me, if you believe me, if you have faith with me and continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, liberated from these taskmasters. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? And Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant or the slave of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free or liberated, you shall be free indeed. Who are we choosing? What God are we choosing? Me? Me? Come on, look in the mirror. You know. Matter of fact, you don't even know your full wretchedness. The Bible says our hearts are willing to see full of all things. Who can know it? Only God. And yet he calls you from that slavery of even yourself. He calls you from the slavery, from this powerful dark angel who rules right now in this world. Who's a lot smarter than you. A lot smarter. He says, I call you from that. I free you from that. I free you from the law which you're trying to keep, which you fail miserably. Let me liberate you. Let me empower you. Let me lift you. Let me give you everything you need to be righteous before my Father in heaven, to live eternally, and to walk free, to free you from these things you've been stumbling with for years. John chapter 3, verse 16 talks about the love of our Father in heaven. He says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Who's freeing you from your taskmaster? Who's liberating you? Was it the military that freed us from England? Is that what you believe? Is it the military power and might that's given us all of our freedoms that we have here in America? Is that what we're celebrating? Our Independence Day from England? Who's our number one ally? Really? You want to go to America? Go to England. It's the same. <laughs> There's not a lot different. Were we really liberated from England? Who freed us to give us our rights? Who freed us to give us the true rights that we don't even exercise anymore? What was the motivation in the beginning? Religious freedoms. Away from taxation without representation. All of these things that we once held dear, they're not. They're casting aside now. The Constitution is meant to be changed. What are we celebrating in America? What freedom? What should we do with our newfound freedom? What are we called to do with freedom? that we've been given. Stay stagnant, go back to the old slop, go back to the same thing that made us vomit at one time? Is that how we use our liberty? Is that what we do? As America has become much, much more immoral, unethical, gone away from that very thing and gone to the thing that once we ran from to be free. And every day, more and more, every day we give up those rights that God has given us to walk in liberty. What do we do with the freedom? The Lord tells us to separate ourselves from Satan's rule 
and stay with God. We're to be independent because we're dependent on God's new government. We're of his new governing. We're no longer Jacob, Kielkanagar, doing things in our own mind, making our own kingdom, but we are now Israel, governed by God Almighty. His liberty, his freedom, unstoppable. The word that goes forth and cannot be stopped. A light that penetrates the darkness and extinguishes it. Come into the light and stay in the light. Where liberty is, the power of God, the love of God that you so desperately yearned for and cried out for at one time. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 says, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not your liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love serve one another. The new and everlasting covenant is love. It's the governance that we now are under. That's where liberty lies. To love your neighbor as yourself. I have liberty to do all things, but not all things are expedient to me. I would rather give up eating meat than to stumble my brother who says it's a sin to God. Because I love him. It's nothing. What's meat to me? Nothing. I'm not going to die. It's pretty cool. What's it called? Some of those things that Burger King. Awesome. Impossible Burger. There's all these things. It's meat, meat. Things. It tastes pretty good. Like these big chickens. Not, I'm not saying that I'm condoning not eating meat here. But you get my point. We're held to a higher standard now. Liberty calls for me to go higher. To whom much has been forgiven, there is much love. I'm not here for my kingdom. I'm here to walk in, in God's governorship. His love. How did he demonstrate that love to me? He so loved the world. He gave his life for you. Your liberty came at a cost. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says, Be you not equally yoked together with unbelievers. For the fellowship has for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Come away! How are you? How is the world even seeing a difference in you? You look just like the world. You're just like you were before when you before you were saved. You're doing the same things. Where's the liberty in that? You're still captive. I see so many people who ask the Lord Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior, and they're sitting there in the prison cell. The door's open. You've been liberated. Get out of there. When the Spirit shook the ground and the doors were open, walk out. Walk out. Stop going back in. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed through the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You're showing others how to get out of it. If you're living like them, how are they going to see the way of escape? You who've been liberated. If you're doing the same things, they're never going to follow you. You're to be light. You're to be salt. You're to have undying, unconditional love. A new commandment I give you, love your enemies. Keep coals on them. That doesn't mean be your enemies. That doesn't mean go back to the taskmaster who once owned you. It means come alongside at all costs, guarding your heart to show them how to get out of the fire. To come out of the building. I'm not going back to that burning building. Well, then you're not a saint. Because a saint will go in in the power of God and not be burned and grab and pull a person out. By love. Not in their own strength. They're not going in ill-equipped. They're going in in the power of God Almighty. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For my God is with me. Right? Emmanuel. Love compels me, gives me victory over these taskmasters of this world. Including... Task number four. Task master number four. Self. Flesh. It's brutal, guys. It's brutal. Wickedly deceitful above all things. Who can know it? I don't know my own wickedness if not coming to the light of the Lord who shows me it. Yet we are free from our deeds as well. Romans chapter 13 verse 12 says... The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. 
What is that saying? We're not robots. We are not ruled like Satan wants to rule you. You know, in the military, everyone dresses the same, acts the same, gets the same haircut, so we all have no personalities. We're all in a line, marching like little robots and drones. That's what Satan wants. Jump, how high? And everything. No, God says, I want you to be exactly, uniquely how you've been made. I've made you with a special passion. And I want to harness that special passion. I know who I made. And by the way, I'm going to fit you perfectly this disorder of all these disorderly, unclean, imperfect vessels. And I'm going to bring them together in a beautiful harmony to make them perfect and righteous to do my work. And blow the mind of everybody, including Satan. I'm going to take your weakness and use it for my strength. I'm going to partner you together and tear down the strongholds of these taskmasters and rock this world. You want to be a rebel? Be a rebel for Jesus Christ. He is a rebel. He came to a world of darkness and lit it on fire. How's your fire? How's your passion? Are you free, really? Or you go into the bottle again and again and again and again and again. I need that. No, you don't need that. Be drunk in the spirit. You don't need that. Freedom comes at a cost and a work. We've been partnered with God. He said, put on. You put on. You put off. Take off. You work. We did an incredible study with the men this past Saturday on that. Anyone who wants to let me know, I'll send it to you. I'll send you the pictures of it. You can have the whole study. It focuses on drug and alcohol, but no, I'm saying idolatry. I switch that, cross that out. It's everything. Put off. Put on. Yes. You. Yes. You've been equipped by the power of the Holy Spirit to walk. Amen. To be free. You have been given life and life more abundantly by God Almighty. Luke chapter 22, verse 42 says, Saying, Father, if thou wilt be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Whose words are those? Jesus, God's Son. If he's saying, not my will, but your will be done, because it's better, govern me. Everything you see, you see the Father in me. All things I say, all things I do are of him. Because that brings liberty. I'm doing this to bring liberty to the world. What are you doing? Before you say, I'll go here and I'll go there, are you saying, if the Lord wills, I'll go here or I'll go there? Or are we making our own plans? God's got a bigger plan for you guys. I'm telling you. This is huge. I don't know if you know it. People say, oh, this is, this is hardly anyone in this church. I don't know. This is huge. Do I have to take you to the book of Gideon? It's by small that the Lord does amazing things. Because He wants to be the one who's glorified. He wants the one that's been seen. This isn't man's work. This isn't a work of the flesh. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, God Almighty. Watch out. Watch Him move. What other plans are you moving in your freedom? Where are you going? Romans chapter 13, verse 1 says, let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but God. The powers that are ordained of God. Who's in charge here? Who's in charge there? I'm not going to. I'm for Bush. I'm for Obama. I'm for Trump. I'm for, I'm for God. I'm for God Almighty. And I'm not going to go against my boss at work because they don't say things the way I like. I obey them because God put them over me at this point. You think Joseph got put in charge, second in command, because he was a rebel against those in authority that God's put over them? Because he wasn't free? No, he was freer than all of them. Even in the prison, he was doing the work of God, liberated. Didn't matter where the world put Joseph, he obeyed God and got promoted because of it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Benham. I could go on and on and on, right? Daniel. These men did what the Lord called them to do and honored those that were put above them so much as they didn't go against God. And if they did, they stood up for truth. Not for silly things, 
Not for silly things that we're fighting over, that we're dividing over. Giving up our freedoms in America for. To fight, letting the taskmaster divide us over nonsense. In hypocrisy, by the way, because our flesh is the taskmaster that's ruling us. Let's carry the banner of freedom starting now. If you haven't been carrying it, let's carry it. Let's carry the banner of freedom. Let's wave it for the whole world to see. Let's be truth bearers. Let your light so shine. Let your freedom be seen among all men, that they would see your works and glorify your Father in heaven. Get on the rooftops and shout. Never has there been more time for us to show the love of God than now in this world. Never. This is a broken world. This is a ready, ripe for harvest world. Everyone's like, oh, the hearts are hard and the hearts are blah, 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 blah. Yeah, they are. But, but never has it been darker, which means never have you been more light. Yeah. Never have you been brighter and more powerful. Never has there been more need in the ministry here in America. We're going to have people come from other countries, England. I mean, not England. Well, it would be nice to have some from England. Yeah. Get some money together, bring Diana up here. But we need submissions, right? We brought missionaries in from Africa, from <laughs> India, from all over. Here's where we need missionaries. You are the missionaries. You are the free people who need to go liberate those that are incarcerated. But if you're walking with them in their prison cell, how are you going to free them? And how are they going to follow you? Declare our freedom and the victory. John chapter 17, verse 16 says, They are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they might also be sanctified through truth. Neither pray I for them, these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they may, they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, and the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, and hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love within, with, wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Sounds like a declaration of independence. Our real declaration of independence. Amen? Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says, Now then, we are ambassadors, where our church name comes from, for Christ, as though God did beseech you or beg you, by us, we pray in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. Come together to God. Let's get God's people out of the encapsulation and the prisons that they're in. Under the false governments, under the destroying governments, under the wicked taskmasters, which they are a part of. God bless America. That's what the country was founded on. God bless America. Not my rifle, not my gun, not any might or power of man, but by your spirit, bless America, God. Bless America. We're going to close with a song by Kate Smith. Many of you have heard. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans White with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, 
white with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home. From the mountains to the prairies, the oceans white with foam, God bless America, home sweet home, God bless America, home sweet home. God not only bless America, but all those who are governed by God. In God we trust. Amen? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your light, which distinguishes the darkness. Thank you for the chains which you've broken, that we can be free. Father, not to go back to the prison or to be leaders of leading those who are out back into prison or keeping those who are in prison in their prison. But instead, Lord, I pray that you have your perfect will in us. Give us your love, not only for one another, that the world would know that we're your disciples, but also a passion and a love for the lost. That we would deny ourselves for their sake. That we could become all things to all people so much as to win them to Christ Jesus and to bring them true freedom, which only comes through you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.